Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video, we're going to talk about the product rule. So now that we've talked about the basic differentiation rules in the previous sections, we're going to now actually tackle how do you find the derivative of more complicated functions, such as products of two functions and also the quotient of two functions. So in this section, we're going to expand on the rules that we found earlier, and we're going to actually develop what's called the product rule and also the quotient rule. So in this video, we're going to talk about using the product rule when appropriate to find the derivative of the product of two functions. So let's talk about the derivatives of products. While the derivative of two functions or the difference of two functions is the sum of the derivatives, so you take the derivative of each term and you either add or you subtract, you keep the sign between the terms, the product of two functions is not the product of their derivatives. What that means is that you can't take the derivative of one function and take the derivative of another function and multiply the derivatives and get the derivative of the product. So to see that, we're going to do example one. The derivative of the product of functions Find the derivative of g of x, which is the product of 4x cubed, subtract 11, times the other function is x plus 3. So let's use the derivative rules that we've established so far in the class. To find the derivative of g of x, we're going to simplify this function first using the FOIL method. So if you take g of x, which is 4x cubed, subtract 11, times x plus 3, you have two terms times two terms, so you can use the FOIL method. So first term times first term will give you 4x cubed times x, which is 4x to the fourth power. The outside would be 4x cubed times 3, which is 12x cubed. The inside is negative 11 times x, or negative 11x. And the last term would be a negative 11 times 3, which is negative 33. So notice that this function g of x is a polynomial function. 4x to the fourth plus 12x cubed subtract 11x subtract 33. We know how to take the derivative of this function. It's a derivative of a polynomial. You can use the power rule, the constant rule, the constant multiple rule, and the sum and difference rules to find the derivative. So what that means is that g prime of x is the derivative of g of x after it's been simplified, which is the derivative of 4x to the fourth. So 4 is a coefficient, you keep it. And x to the fourth is a power function, so you use the power rule to find its derivative, which is 4x to the third. 12 is a coefficient, so you keep it. The derivative of x cubed, x cubed is a power function, so power rule says the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Negative 11x, the derivative is negative 11. And the derivative of negative 33, 33 is a constant, so the derivative is zero. So after you simplify, you'll have 16x to the third plus 36x squared subtract 11. That's the function g prime of x, the derivative of g of x. So notice that g prime of x was 16x cubed plus 36x squared subtract 11. It's not the product of the derivatives. So the first term or the first function in the product was 4x cubed subtract 11. The derivative of 4x cubed minus 11 is 12x squared. Whereas the derivative of the other function, the other function was x plus 3 that's being multiplied in the product, the derivative of x plus 3 is just 1. So if you multiply these two derivatives together, 12x squared times 1, you get 12x squared, and that was not what g prime of x was equal to. So these are entirely different functions. So you cannot take the derivative of each function and then multiply to get the derivative of the product. So notice in the previous example that we were able to simplify the function first before finding the derivative. Suppose that we have a function f of x of this form. f of x is the product of two functions. It's 4x to the fifth plus x cubed subtract 1.5x squared subtract 11. That's the first function. Times the other function is x to the seventh subtract 7.25x to the fifth plus 120x plus 3. So what you could do is you could multiply these two functions and simplify f of x. But notice it's not as simple as the last example. You have four terms times four terms. That will give you 16 multiplications to do to simplify this function. But it actually turns out that you can find the derivative of a product of two functions much more quickly. So the goal is, can we find a formula for the derivative of a product of two functions so that we do not have to multiply out the two functions first and then find the derivative second? Because multiplying out the two polynomials could take a long time. It would be great to find a formula so that we can find the derivative of a product of two functions very quickly. So let's see if we can come up with one. G of x is 4x cubed subtract 11 times x plus 3. That was the original function g of x. And we know that if we multiply this out, we came up with g prime of x was 16x cubed plus 36x squared subtract 11. And we knew that if we took the derivative of 4x cubed subtract 11, we got 12x squared. And if we took the derivative of the other function, the derivative of x plus 3 was 1. We know we can't multiply these two to get the derivative of the product. But let's see if we can come up with something a little bit different. Let's say we take the derivative of 4x cubed minus 11, so that was 12x squared, and let's multiply by the other function but keep it the same. So 12x squared times the other function was x plus 3. So 12x squared 
That's the derivative of the first function. x plus 3 is the second function unchanged. So if you multiply, you have to distribute the 12x squared through the parentheses. So 12x squared times x gives you 12x cubed. 12x squared times 3 gives you 36x squared. All right, now let's try the same thing with the other combination. Let's take the derivative of the second function, which was the derivative of x plus 3, which was 1, and let's keep the first function unchanged. So 1 is the derivative of the second function, or the second factor. 4x cubed minus 11 was the first function unchanged. So 1 times 4x cubed is 4x cubed. 1 times negative 11 is negative 11. Now let's see what happens if you add these two answers together. 12x cubed plus 36x squared plus 4x cubed subtract 11. 12x cubed plus 4x cubed gives you 16x cubed. 36x squared, that's the only x squared term, so 36x squared, and negative 11. Notice that the derivative of g was 16x cubed plus 36x squared subtract 11. These are identical. So it looks like we may have identified a formula to actually take the derivative of a product without actually multiplying out each of the factors. The rules for finding the derivatives of products, or quotients, as we will see in the next video, are a little complicated, but they will save us a lot of work in terms of algebra that we would be forced to do if we actually multiplied out the polynomial first and then took the derivative. So we can use the product rule together with the basic differentiation rules that we talked about earlier in the class to find the derivatives of more complicated looking functions. So this is what's called the product rule of derivatives. Suppose that f of x and g of x are differentiable functions, so that means f prime of x and g prime of x exist, then the derivative of the product of two functions is as follows. You take the derivative of the first function, which was f of x, so f prime of x, times the other function, g of x, unchanged. Then you do the opposite. You keep the first function the same, and you take the derivative of the g of x, so f of x times g prime of x, and you add the two answers together. So in other words, the derivative of the first, so that's f prime of x, times the second function left alone, so you keep it unchanged, plus the first function unchanged, so left alone, times the derivative of the second, which was g prime of x. So let's see if we can use the product rule with the function we had in example one. g of x was 4x cubed subtract 11 times x plus 3. So 4x cubed minus 11 is going to be called the first function. That's the f of x in the formula. And x plus 3 is the second function, and that's going to be called g of x in the formula. So then the derivative of this function, the product, would be the first function unchanged times the derivative of the second. So first function, 4x cubed subtract 11, times the derivative, d dx, of x plus 3, plus the second function, unchanged, times the derivative of the first function. So d dx of 4x cubed subtract 11. So 4x cubed minus 11 stays the same. The derivative of x plus 3 was 1. x plus 3 stays the same. And the derivative of 4x cubed minus 11 was 12x squared. So we have to do a little bit of simplifying, but it's not as complicated as it could have been before we took the derivative earlier. So 4x cubed minus 11 times 1 stays the same, 4x cubed minus 11. x plus 3 times 12x squared, distribute the 12x squared through the parentheses. x times 12x squared gives you 12x cubed, and 3 times 12x squared gives you 36x squared. Now if you combine like terms, you have 4x cubed plus 12x cubed, that's 16x cubed, 36x squared minus 11, and that is the derivative of g of x. So we can use this formula to find the derivative of a product of two functions now. So example two, finding derivatives of products. Find the derivatives of the following functions. Number one, f of x is equal to x subtract five is one factor times three x plus seven, that's another factor. So we know the derivative will not just be one times three. It's not the product of the two derivatives. We have to use the product rule. So f of x is x minus five, that's gonna be called the first function, and three x plus seven, that's the second function. So the formula says for the product rule, the derivative of our function is Keep the first function the same, unchanged, but take the derivative of the second function, so d dx derivative of 3x plus 7, plus the second function unchanged, 3x plus 7, times the derivative, d dx, of the first function. So take the derivative of x minus 5. So f prime of x is x minus 5. What's the derivative of 3x plus 7? It's 3, plus 3x plus 7 is unchanged, and the derivative of x minus 5 is 1. So now we have a little bit of simplifying. You have 3 times x, that's 3x. 3 times 5 is 15, so 3x minus 15. After you simplify the first part, 3x plus 7 times 1 is 3x plus 7. 
And now combine like terms and you'll come up with 6x minus 8. That is the derivative of this original function. Now you could multiply out this function and then take the derivative and you'll come up with the same answer. But the product rule actually makes the algebra much more easily done. You have three that needs to be distributed here and one distributed here and then combine like terms. It makes the algebra much easier. All right, number two, g of x is 8x to the fifth times e to the x. Now notice that you can't multiply this function out because it's already simplified as much as possible. So you will have to use the product rule to find the derivative of g of x. So g of x is 8x to the fifth times e to the x. So 8x to the fifth will be the first function and e to the x will be the second function, the exponential function. So g prime of x is, you keep the first function 8x to the fifth the same, but you take the derivative of e to the x. Plus, you keep the second function the same, so e to the x is unchanged, times the derivative of 8x to the fifth, which was the derivative of the first function. So that's what the product rule says, but now we actually have to take the derivatives. 8x to the fifth, the derivative of e to the x we've talked about before, the derivative of e to the x is itself. So 8x to the fifth times e to the x, plus and then e to the x was the second function times the derivative of the first, which would be 8 is a coefficient, so keep it. The derivative of x to the fifth would be 5x to the fourth. So now simplify. The first term is already simplified, so 8x to the fifth e to the x. The second term is 8 times 5, you'll have 40x to the fourth e to the x. So this answer is perfectly fine, but if you notice, you can simplify by factoring. Both of these terms have an 8x to the fourth e to the x in common. So they both have an 8 factor in common, they both have x to the 4th in common, and they both have e to the x in common. What's left over after you factor out this Gray's common factor, or GCF, would be x from the first term and a 5 from the second term. So 8x to the 4th e to the x times the quantity x plus 5. That's also the derivative. Number 3. This time the function is h of x equals 9x to the 7th times natural log of x. Let's find out the derivative of this product. Again, you cannot simplify before you find the derivative because this function is already simplified as much as possible. So h of x would be 9x to the 7th, that's going to be the first function, times the other function will be natural log of x, the natural logarithmic function. So the derivative, you have to use the product rule, h prime of x is the first function unchanged times the derivative of the second function, the derivative of natural log of x plus the second function stays unchanged this time, natural log of x, times the derivative of the first function, so the derivative of 9x to the 7th. So h prime of x is equal to 9x to the 7th, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, as we talked about in the previous video, plus natural log of x is unchanged, times the derivative of 9x to the 7th. 9 is a coefficient, so keep it. x to the 7th is a power function, and the derivative of a power function, use the power rule, 7x to the 6th. So now just simplify. You have 9x to the 7th divided by x. The x will cancel out with one of those x to the 7th, so you have 9x to the 6th left, plus 9 times 7 gives you 63x to the 6th times natural log of x. And so notice that h prime of x is equal to 9x to the 6th plus 63x to the 6th times natural log of x. Both of these terms have something in common again, so the greatest common factor in this case is 9x to the 6th. When you factor out the GCF, you factor out the entire term from the first term, you factor out the entire GCF from the first term, so there's a 1 left, plus 63, you took 9 away, so there's still a factor of 7 left. You took x to the 6th out, but there's still a natural log of x left. So you can also have the derivative written this way in factored form. h of x is 9x to the 6th times the quantity 1 plus 7 times natural log of x. So number 4, k of t is the function e to the t plus 3 is one function, times another function, 3t cubed, subtract 4t, subtract 5. So the first function is an exponential function. The second function is a polynomial. So we definitely need to use the product rule here to find out the derivative. So k of t is e to the t plus 3, that will be the first function, and 3t cubed, subtract 4t, subtract 5, that will be called the second function in the product rule. So the product rule says the derivative, k prime of t, is the first function unchanged, e to the t plus 3, times the derivative of the second function, the derivative of 3t cubed subtract 4t minus 5, plus, then you keep the second function unchanged, times the derivative of the first function, the derivative of e to the t plus 3. So e to the t plus 3 times, what's the derivative of the second function? It is 3 as a coefficient, so keep it. The derivative of t cubed is 3t squared, 
The derivative of negative 4t is negative 4, and negative 5 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. So it looks like it will be 9t squared subtract 4. So it looks like the derivative will be 9t squared subtract 4 after you simplify. Now the other term, you have 3t cubed minus 4t minus 5, that stays the same. The derivative of e to the t is itself e to the t, just like the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And 3 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. So it looks like after you simplify, the derivative of the second function is just e to the t. So now we have to do a little bit of simplifying. You have two terms times two terms. So you have to use FOIL. e to the t times 9t squared. That's 9t squared e to the t. e to the t times negative 4 is negative 4 e to the t. The inside would give you 3 times 9t squared. That's 27t squared. And 3 times negative 4 gives you negative 12. Now the other term, you have e to the t times this polynomial. So e to the t needs to be distributed to all three terms. You have 3t cubed times e to the t negative 4t times e to the t, and negative 5 times e to the t. So the reason why we're simplifying this by distributing and also using the FOIL method is there could be like terms that we can combine. So k prime of t is 3t cubed times e to the t, that's this term. You also have 9t squared e to the t, that's this term, minus 4t e to the t, that's this term. So notice I'm just rewriting this so that the t's are decreasing by powers of 1 and all of them have e to the t so far. But then notice you have negative 4 e to the t and negative 5 e to the t. So you have negative 9 e to the t. So that takes care of all the terms that have e to the t in them. So what's left should just be terms with t. So you have a 27 t squared, and then you have a constant term, negative 12. So k prime of t simplified would be 3 t cubed e to the t plus 9 t squared e to the t minus 4 t times e to the t Subtract 9e to the t plus 27t squared to track 12. And then the last problem, number 5, y is equal to x times natural log of the cube root of x. So let's see if we can simplify this function first before using the product rule. So y is equal to x times natural log of cube root of x. We know that the cube root of x can be rewritten as a fraction power. So this is really x times natural log of x to the one third power. So now you can use the power law for logarithms. You can take the one-third, which is the exponent on the x, and bring it down and make it a coefficient for the logarithm. So this makes it one-third times x, after you take the power down, times natural log of x. Now we haven't taken the derivative yet, we just rewrote the function. So one-third x is the first function that's being multiplied with the second function, natural log of x. So you do have a product of two functions here, so we have to use the product rule to find the derivative. So the derivative y prime would be, the first function stays the same, times the derivative of the second function, so the derivative of natural log of x, plus, this time the second function stays the same, but you take the derivative of the first function, so the derivative of one-third x. So one-third x times the derivative of natural log of x was one divided by x, plus the natural log of x times, what's the derivative of one-third x? It's one-third. So natural log of x times one-third. So now I'll do a little bit of simplifying. One-third x times 1 over x, the x's will just simplify or cancel each other out, so it'll just be left with a 1 third, plus 1 third times natural log of x, that's the second term. So this is y prime, it's 1 third plus 1 third times natural log of x, but notice that 1 third is in common, so you can factor it out. So you have 1 third times, you factor out 1 third from 1 third, you still have a factor of 1 left, plus, and then the second term you have a natural log of x left. So either of these answers is perfectly fine. It's just that this answer has one-third factored out. One-third times the quantity, one plus natural log of x, is also the derivative of y. So this is a good place to stop our video after we've talked about the product rule of derivatives. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the quotient rule.